Hey y'all, welcome to Word of Hannah. Welcome back if you're returning. So um, I've been getting the energy of it being too late. Um, so it's, it's uh, all the energies that I've been getting, the messages that I've been getting um, have just been kind of coming together. Um, but what I've been getting is that now is the time where the people who have been throwing the stones essentially have to be questioned and they have to admit why they've been throwing the stones. They have to answer questions. Um, they may have thought that they were going to be the ones to stone you, provoke, uh, you know, not literally, hopefully, but um, I've been getting the energy of like, the people who have been sitting up here and have been um, scrutinizing you now have to explain why they were doing it and what did you do to them to quote unquote deserve it. Um, there is somebody who, um, there's somebody who may be telling themselves that they're a victim because maybe like a lot of these people actually might be telling themselves that they're a victim. They might be saying something to the tune of that they did not know that they were stoning someone who was innocent, but there's no excuse. And that's the part that I'm getting a lot of that it's like, that part is like, it's too late because it's like your brain didn't shut off. It's not like you didn't know that you could reason. You, you didn't, it's not like you didn't know that you didn't have to believe it. You, it's not like you didn't know that there's more than one side to a story and then there's the truth somewhere in the middle. It's not like you didn't know that you could just hear that information and not throw a stone. You knew. You chose and you chose wrong. And so it's fine that it's like now you choose to see the truth or to ask, but it's too late. So it may be too late in terms of like some of you... Um, if this is a work situation is what I'm hearing, I wasn't going to say it because I know I find myself in a similar situation. You might not even want to share the truth because it's like, well, you didn't want to know it. You chose not to know the truth. So don't ask me for it now is how you might feel. Some of you might feel like, oh, well, don't ask me. You could have asked me back then because some of you are, I heard jaded and confused. Some of you might be hurt. So it's like, why are you asking me for the truth now when you could have asked me before you stoned me? It's like, don't, it's almost, it's, it's giving a lot of that, like they thought that their stones was going to take your ass out. And now that it didn't, now they want to come talking to you. And it's like, but dude, you're the only reason that you're coming and talking to me is because somebody made you or because you look like a villain. You know what I mean? Where it's like a lot of people, I kept getting the energy all week of like people wanting to be, to play both sides, you know? And I think this has come out in readings in the past where it's like, yeah, it has when I didn't realize that I was reading, when I would be talking about different experiences that I've had in different social situations where people want to straddle the fence between being the villain and the victim, where they want to be both. They want it for social collateral. They want to be a villain. But then when it's time to take those L's that villains do take, where they look like a monster, they're treated like a monster, people call them a monster, and people alienate them like they're a monster, then they want to run. Villains don't have a crowd. They might have some minions, they may have a trusty sidekick, you know the movie. Very rarely is a villain rolling deep. And so somebody didn't want it to be a villain or several people wanted to be a villain, but they wanted to just pretend like that wasn't what they were doing. They wanted to like tell these stories to make it seem like they weren't being a villain, but they were. They were, they had a gang mentality and they were ganging up. And that is the gang stalking that a lot of us spiritual beings have been talking about. Ganging up, gang stalking. Finding things out about people to, to justify ganging up on them. And somebody or somebodies are now making the connection. Um, the other thing that I've been getting is that, or I, I heard we're not ready for that part yet or that time yet. Um,
it's it I keep getting that song is too late to apologize um but I keep getting that just like it's too late like it's too late to feign ignorance it's too late like in the whole situation because the only reason that like somebody is forcing their hand they're not they're not changing their tune because of any other reason than because somebody else is making them do it if this if this is an illegal situation or if this is something where what was done was illegal they're trying to avoid being sued but whether you decide to sue them or not there are going to be there's going to be justice and it doesn't matter what they do there's going to be justice that is going to be due for all of you who have found yourselves on the receiving end of any kind of bullshit. Um, any kind of like where you were essentially made to look wrong. So the people who wanted to do wrong by you could pretend like they were doing wrong in return for something. When in actuality, they just didn't want to be the villain. So they just had to lie and pretend. And then there were other people who didn't want to know whether or not it was the truth. So they just didn't ask. There's no excuse for that. They may have been telling themselves that there was, but if they leave, if... You can't act on one piece of information and then justify it. You just can't. Because that means you never looked for the truth. You just didn't question it, some of you. Or some of you were in a situation where people didn't question things that were said about you or done to you. They just went with it. And this is a large community of people. This shit might make the news. There may have been people who were trying to get you to look like a tyrant. They may have been doing things with frequencies or tuning forks. I keep getting the energy of like G.I. Joe. Like somebody might know somebody in the military who has access to certain tools um, that they were using. Maybe they um, had you under monitor or had you um, under a spell. Or, um, for a lot of people, I know a lot of um, uh, readers who... Um, Usually it's indigenous readers now that I'm thinking about it. Usually you talk about at some point knowing that they've been being watched like within inside their homes. Um, it's almost because I don't I don't listen to a whole lot of readers, but um, the ones that talk about being monitored and spied on, having people go in their house when they're not home, placing, you know, devices to watch and stuff like that. It's almost all indigenous people who have said that. People who are of Native American descent, African descent, um, or a combination of the of the two. And you know, I'm I'm out. Um, I'm still on the fence about which is which. Um, I realized when I was at a, a sidebar, I was at a um, a powwow with the YWCA watching the uh, 1619 project um, by uh, I think it's Nicole Hannah I forget her last name her second last name her or her married name um, and we got to talking and one of the ladies was talking about how you know people uh, and you go and you teach your kids the wrong thing because you think that um that we're this or we're that or something she she was going off on some tirade about people teaching their kids the wrong history because of something that either had to do with lincoln his purpose something about history and i realized in that moment that i didn't really care um about those details so much because they weren't nearly as important as um the purpose behind it all as uh, just balance, fairness, love, compassion, and things like that. And I realized that while I'm still interested in history, I love history, I'm very passionate about history, I'll never know, and nobody will, no matter how much they study, whose ideologies and scholarship it is that they feel like they know and that's the most truest of the true. There isn't one person who was around then who is around now that can tell us for sure what it was and what it wasn't. And we can study and know as much as we want to say that we know, and we still will never really know because we weren't there. And 
that too ties into the things that it is that I've said. Because one of the things that I realized as I've been experiencing this is that it doesn't really matter the semantics of it all. Those little details that people like to get caught up in don't matter. What matters is that we all know right and wrong and that they do not apply differently based on how we personally feel about anyone. And I think that some of you, like myself, have found yourself in a situation where people were trying to justify doing wrong to you. And maybe they tried, they made up a lot of things about you. Maybe they went combing the internet and combing. That came, I, I didn't intend on saying combing the internet. Um, but they went looking for things to say about you in order to justify doing things to you that were more than likely rooted in their ego. Where it's like that thing where it's like, They can't say what the real issue is. So what I'm getting being reminded of is the video that I that I did um, a couple of years ago that's titled The Witches Ate Valerie. This was probably like three years ago where I talked about working in a space where um, I was the new girl. There were hostilities brewing. Somebody cussed somebody out like my second day there and just grabbed her stuff and just quit immediately. It was just like, F y'all, F this, da 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 um very interesting video very interesting experience um and i remember like slowly no matter how much i tried to like just play the fence and stay cool with everybody i wound up getting pulled into two things because the ways of the people were already it was already there when i got there and because it was being avoided like res resolving the issue or addressing it um directly was being like avoided or no one knew how to do it they um i heard it was being avoided nothing was done um and so when there was finally a meeting um you know it took months of avoidance before finally a meeting was called and I forget what happened that caused it to finally get called but I've, I've been in those meetings so many times before and every single time nobody tells the truth about the real reason they act up and this is specifically going to be for those of you who have found yourself not doing much of anything other than whatever it is you're supposed to be doing and somebody finding a reason to target you anyway because their propensity to act out without provocation is reflections internal and i don't care what anybody does to try to mind fuck you or to try and twist things around or to try and exaggerate certain things to make them seem one way when they're really another if somebody cannot show up in a space any space and just be and they have to go and disrupt it is because the peace is something that they don't know and they don't like it so they have to create chaos because that's what they're used to because that's what they have going on on the inside and they don't mind disrupting everybody else's peace to make sure that they're comfortable in the chaos that can be something that they know they're doing some people are our legitimate authors of confusion and chaos and they know it and they just accept it and some people is subconscious, some people don't know it, some up, some people it's their upbringing, some people are just angry. Um, but when somebody is, is, everything makes them mad and, you know, it's like a constant thing all the time where it's just this constant frustration and anger with everything and they just they they don't have no chill they got some work that they're supposed to be doing and you can't let them put your name on that work because they they will sit up here and they will swear to mother father god that getting rid of you will illuminate will illuminate like an a issue and will just completely destroy whatever it is that's going on within them and that's a lie they're just scared of what they're going to find when they go within they're scared okay and blaming someone else for what we do and the choices that we make was well, certainly it feels a lot better 
because then we don't have to take the blame for anything. And so I found that when those meetings are had, if the behavior itself is not addressed and the specifics of it um, are focused on, then the behavior itself doesn't go away because you're not fixing the core, the root. And there's not, you can't give people space or allow people to have space where you're concerned, where you're letting them focus on the semantics because they'll try to do that, whether they know it or not. The human brain even will try to avoid work. You know, the human brain wants to immediately come to like just quickly, boom, boom, boom. Like the, the brain doesn't want to have to like think you have to work it. It's a muscle. You got to work that thing. Um, and that's just, na that's just naturally how it works. I'm getting animal farm for some reason. Some of this, uh, what you've been experiencing or witnessing. And I think this came out in the other channeling the other day too, but a lot of this could be like some animal farm or it could remind you of animal farm type thing. Um, uh, by, uh, Orson Welles, I think it is, our animal farm. Um, some of y'all might need to read that book. It's amazing. And if you're, um, it's not nearly, it's an easy read. It's, it's so, it's an easy read in that it's very easy to immediately get into it. And before you know it, you're at the end of the story and you're like, your mind is blown and you get it, but then you want more but you get that the ending is you know it it fits and then you are you can see what he's talking about replicated everywhere all the time um the other thing that i've been getting though is that you know There, I heard feelings of inadequacy. Um, so there's some people who could like... So going back to the Witches 8 Valerie, during that meeting, the real issue, even though the ladies never came out and said it, was that they, want, they didn't want better for themselves and they resented anybody who did. So they ate Valerie because Valerie had a very natural curiosity about just different things that were going on at work. They ain't like that. They resented Honey Bun because um, when they came in and asked, you know, do you want to go and work in other another department? She said, yeah. And then, you know, because they, they came in and asked everybody and they all the people who were angry said, no, I'm good where I'm at. No, I'm good. I don't want to learn something new. I don't. And then it was like a whole lot of like. No, I don't want to do anything different. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Um, and it wasn't, it was something that was far easier. It was like, say, going from shuffling papers to just typing on a computer. It's going from being in a noisy environment to being in a quiet environment. It's going from picking up heavy stuff and sorting and doing all of this tedious to just do, 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 reading, researching, stuff like that. And they all, one of them said no, and then they all said no. And then the people who said, yes, I want to learn something new, got targeted. And so when it came time to have the meeting, they wouldn't admit it that they had a problem. They wouldn't deny the things that they did because they couldn't. They couldn't deny it. They had, like... A lot of times, I'm, hold on. So they couldn't deny it. I'm not going back to that thought. They couldn't deny it. But they wouldn't admit the truth either. They couldn't say that they weren't doing those things. They wouldn't tell the truth about why they were really doing it because then they would be vulnerable and reveal that there was a deficit within them that they had allowed to grow so big 
that they were like taking it out on people who had nothing to do with the personal choices that they were making about the opportunities that they wanted to open themselves up to and, and the fact that they were the ones who were in control of it. If there was anybody in their life that ever told them that they couldn't or that they shouldn't or that they would never, they're the ones who know about it, not you. But they wanted you to make you pay because you didn't feel that way. They wanted to knock you down and make you feel like you, they, they wanted to make it seem like you deserved it. Like somehow you believe in yourself with some sort of a personal attack on them. I know myself being called a bougie bitch, a princess and all this other stuff. People love to try and like make it seem like I, if I don't carry it, like life has been hard, then it's their job to try and make life hard for me. And being a woman of uh, color, a uh, indigenous woman, native african whatever you want to call it both being recognized as being my bloodline and me of course not knowing what to call it because how how i i would love to know but i don't i know that i'm blackfoot and i know that i'm double cherokee and i know that i'm ghanaian and everything else, I don't know. Who was who first and all of that, I, I don't know. I think that the original people look like me. And I think it's a fact. But then when we get into the semantics, I don't know. And because I don't know... I'm starting to see less and less of any value in trying to argue the answers when I know I can go within and find out far more than I could by arguing or trying to find the answers from somebody else who also wasn't there and may feel sure and confident in saying what I am and what I'm not, knowing that they weren't there either. But I know I don't feel confident. Like, I don't care how sure they are or what facts they present. I know I just don't give a fuck. So, um, the, the fact of the matter is, is that I was called all these different things. And when people found out that my life hadn't been easy, they celebrated like, aha, see, you ain't have this, da, 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 da. and it's like, nigga, I never said that my life was easier, that I was perfect. I just didn't give up on myself. And it feels like people who don't give up on themselves seem to really take it personally when people struggle and scrape and don't give up. Like they seem to feel like, well, you're making, like they just, they remove their personal feelings and the why they feel that way and they immediately go into attack mode. And it's like, no, no, because you're, this is a steam of yourself. And I don't have to, nobody, none of us has to go around telling our life story to anybody. What we have to do is manage the energy we're in do what we're supposed to do, be what we're supposed to be, figure this life thing out and not get in anybody's way while they're trying to do the same. But this thing where people take other people's dreams personally, even the universe ain't checking for that energy. And I think that's what these people are finding out because the other thing that these people are figuring out is exactly what it is, especially for those of us who are spiritual, who find ourselves, you know, rocking crystals and, you know, reading cards and, you know, wanting to have some sort of deeper understanding about it all. We're, it's starting to become clear exactly what it is that's been going on all along. And it is like, essentially, it's the people who are operating out of their heart space and are not angry and, you know, discontent with life, who are beginning to look more and more like a people who we've all read about, who had, who had faith and who believed in, you know, 
it may have seemed a little unique, a little, you know, out of the ordinary. But a lot of us were believing in Mother, Father, God. We were believing in a higher purpose, a higher source. And now it's starting to be clear. I don't know why I keep hearing Pharisees. Um, I'm tempted to pause my phone and look it up. Um, but... Thinking about the stories of people who followed a spiritual believer or a spiritual leader. It's almost like the fishers of men are the ones who are here, you know, living the god consciousness that other people study and read but then they go and they judge people and make people feel unsafe to even like try to find god in church and then you know people are like i don't want to go to church um i don't know it's it's like it's something there it's something in that it's something that has to do with um It has something to do with the people who were throwing the stones and then the people who were being stoned. Something to do with the people who were outcasted being the ones who also were handpicked and the people who were doing the outcasting and um, it's giving that it's too late and that, you know, they've already shown themselves to be the ones, especially, you know, because a lot of us who are spiritual, we, we were already getting outcasted before we even really understood why it was happening. A lot of us consider ourselves to be black sheep. A lot of us already. And, and the thing about it is, is that if you are specifically somebody where it's like people made it their point to say, oh, look, see, look, see, look, see, that very information is going to turn around and be used to, to verify and validate exactly what it is that I'm saying right now. Because the people who it is who are doing the outcasting were celebrating doing the outcasting and were like, oh, well, all these people outcasted you too. And it's like, yes, now let's let's draw a parallel between this because you know who else was being outcasted and what were they doing some of the holiest men wore a breastplate with crystals on it back in the times of the old testament back in those days did they or did they not? It's a rhetorical question. They wore jade, green adventuring, amethyst, onyx, obsidian, carnelian, red jasper, hematite. Hematite? Listen to the words. Listen to the names. Hematite? If that's not some old Hebrew type Egyptian, Judaic, a name that is like no other. I don't know what is. Opalite. So now that it's clear that all of us who were being black listed is what I heard are who we say we are for those of us who actually are who we say we are and we didn't really know what it was we were doing or why or what it like what it all meant what it looked like or anything like that now that it's clear it's that's why it's too late because it's already been recorded i heard in the book of books it's already been recorded or maybe on facebook these people already putting their energetic signature on being the opposition so now that they know that they were opposing people who were like essentially walking with the god they could not see they can't change their mind and make it seem like something other than what it is now that they're looking like an actual villain like y'all were sitting up here and were attacking people who were following god and you can't change it 
and now they're going to feel the shame that they wanted for all of us and it just is what it is and there is literally there's nothing they can do but hold it for however many lifetimes it's gonna take just like they did to you and I.